there were some groups for a while with regard to FDA who weren't sure whether or not to, but, but they wanted me where I was. But what a wonderful, warm, warm welcome, and I'm so honored to be here with all of you today. You know, I, I tell you, I know there's, there are a number of men in the audience, but don't women know how to do it right? <laughs>
urgent research that has a real impact and matters in people's everyday lives. And more often than not, you give the gift of life. And no one can do more than that in what their profession is all about. You've been so wonderful with your time, and Senator, working with me, with working my, my staff, and as a policymaker, and, and I know Senator Grassley feels the same, when uh, there is no greater source of information uh, than you bring to us, uh, and you are unrelenting in your vigilance uh, with regard to these issues and with regard to the Food and Drug Administration. <laughs> so uh, I would just say to you that I, I've only been the chair, though it's felt longer, of the, uh, of the subcommittee for the last couple of years, ranking member for two years, but I've sat on the committee for 14 years. I want you to know that the production agriculture people in the Midwest are wondering what someone from New Haven, Connecticut <laughs> is doing as chair of the Agriculture uh, and the Food and Drug Administration uh, 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 subcommittee. I got onto the committee precisely for the health care reasons that we're all interested in all those years ago, um, and the nutrition issues um, uh, with WIC and food stamps, etc. Um, but I've learned a lot about wheat in Kansas and uh, <laughs> a citrus canker in Florida, so you know, I'm learning e e every day. But I would just tell you, what's been so important to me over the last several years, and, and what I've tried to spend some time, and others have as well, is is to fix the systemic problems in our food safety system. And I believe it's time to restructure what is broken, uh, which is why we introduced the Food Safety Modernization Act. Simply, it separates the food safety regulation from drug and device uh, approvals uh, at the agency, helping to restore the balance that has long been missing, in my view, at the Department of Health and Human Services. And I'm proud to say that as the chair of this subcommittee, we have increased the resources about 40% to the FDA, and the budget that just came out yesterday for the first time, the FDA budget is over $3 billion, it's $3.2 billion, with a recognition that work needs to get done, and that work needs to deal with the infrastructure inside as well to deal with the issues it, uh, it takes on. Um, this is more than just another Washington bureaucratic turf battle. Uh, it is about restoring the confidence in our food supply, protecting the public health, and how many families do we have to hear from? Like the hundreds that are sickened by peanuts or by spinach, parents watching their kids get sick. Heartbreaking stories mm -hmm. of uncertainty and, yes, of loss on something that is preventable. This is about building a system that is committed to actively preventing foodborne illness, not just reacting to it. Nor do our efforts at the FDA stop at food. We have worked tirelessly to shine a light on drugs and devices and their impact on women. Shortly after I became the ranking member of the subcommittee, with your help, with your help, we outlined for the then commissioner some critical issues uh, uh, from the safety data provided by the silicone gel breast implant manufacturers, mm -hmm. uh, and especially for breast cancer patients, to the age, to working with to the agent at uh, the agency's endless foot dragging, uh, foot dragging on plan B. Yeah. Uh, and I will mention Susan in a moment here. <laughs> uh, but your counsel was invaluable as we drafted and we refined the FDA Scientific Fairness for Women Act. Again, for a closer look, at the emergency contraception decision, silicone breast implants, and to elevate the Office of Women's Health within the FDA so that the office reports directly to the commissioner and ultimately what we were calling for was smart policy, real leadership to take the politics out of women's health decision making. Um, year in and year out, we have fought to ensure the Office of Women's Health that it was not stripped of funds, uh, and I would just say, I will mention Susan Wood, you are our hero, Susan. Thank you for all of you. And thank you for your courage. Thank you for your courage. Um, you know, even during those times, simply ensuring level funding uh, 
uh, was a small victory. We were hanging on. But last year, we were able to increase the budget with another million dollars, and today we continue to build that support, prioritizing women's health at the agency and ensuring that scientists are able to work unfettered. Uh, going forward, I'm going to continue to ask for your help on these issues as we bring them uh, to the front and the center in a new day, a new dawn, and in a new environment, as, as far as I'll go with that. Uh, uh, but demanding transparency from clinical study reports, calling on the FDA to be completely open about its meetings with representatives of regulated companies, balancing new drug and device approval and post-market surveillance, re-examining the laws that govern medical device approval, making sure they clearly describe when a 5510K approval is appropriate and when a full review process must be required. Um, no doubt, we have an uphill climb, but when I think of how far we have come, I am hopeful. Um, when I was first elected to the Congress, there were precious few women in the institution. Uh, there were 14 Democratic women in the House, and one female center, very few Republican women, none women in, none of, from any party in the leadership, a gym for men, and certain hours reserved for women. And that's why I talk again about the pioneer quality of people like uh, Connie Morello. But then, as more women were elected, we were able to change things. Uh, I had the great fortune of being appointed to the Appropriations Committee, and there I served with Nancy Pelosi and with Nita Lowy, um, and where we could work on the Labor, Health, Education, and Human Services a subcommittee and begin to try to change things. Um, there were comrades in arms, as again were uh, uh, Pat and Connie, and I can remember Connie talking about uh, microbicides and for women. Absolutely, Connie, I don't forget those things. <laughs> and women, and women in AIDS, and so forth, and all these issues, and, and her questioning Tony Fauci about these things. <laughs> so forth. Uh, but we were able to persuade HHS to open the Office of Women's Health. We launched the, the Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program, which is now nationwide, and we fought to double the funding for NIH. I'm sorry Chuck Rashley isn't here because I said to you that we are, uh, uh, we don't have the majority uh, in the House. It is a legislative body. So what do you do in a legislative body? I don't like to be marginalized and say, oh my God, poor us. We can't get anything done. You reach out. You reach out to like-minded women. You reach out to like-minded men. And you put together the coalitions that allow you to get these bills passed. And Chuck Grassley is a guy who gets it. And there are a lot of others. And our job is to reach out, pull together, and to get these pieces of legislation passed with help from a number of our colleagues. 10 years ago, the National Research Center for Women and Families was just getting off the ground. Barack Obama was a young Chicago lawyer recently elected to the state senate. And the cause of women's health was not getting the attention that it deserved. Today, while so much has changed, some of our greatest challenges remain the same. This is a transformational moment. It is possible to act for women and for families and fight for the policies and the programs that will change their lives for the better. That is what Congress can do. It is what its strength is. It is its potential to make opportunity real for the people of this great nation. This is our window of opportunity, my friends. Let us not let it slam down before we do everything we can to foster uh, this cause of women and children and families. Let's make it happen. Thank you.